Hi. Now, all too often, I see people write down solutions to equations. And here's a typical example of the kind of thing that I see. Now, the answer is 1. x does equal 1. It works. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 6 gives us 8. But this is what I would call a very poor layout for an equation. So can you see anything wrong with this? Or is this something that you would most probably do? Well, it's these equals down here. They don't make it have any sense at all. Because, for instance, we've got here 8 equals 2x. And on this line, I'm saying 2x equals 2. So I've already contradicted myself. 8 equals 2x, 2x equals 2. 8 can't be equal to 2. And here I say that 2 equals x, but then I say x equals 1. So again, there's a contradiction. So writing out equations like this, putting equals down here, is not a good idea. And I would always say to most of my students, if you tend to put two equals on a line, there's a good chance that you're going to be writing incorrect statements. So I would certainly encourage you to write down one equals on a line. So bearing that in mind, how would I write something like this out? Well, OK, we start by writing 2x plus 6 equals 8. Now, I'm going to take 6 from both sides, and that would leave me with 2x equals 8 take 6. Or you could write 2x equals 2 immediately. But more importantly, what I'd encourage you to do is write this symbol in. It's like three dots, and it means therefore. It follows on that if I take 6 from both sides, that 2x is equal to 8 take 6. Now, you don't have to write this in, but I would certainly encourage you to do it, because it links this statement to the one above. It's telling me it's come from the one above. It's not something that's totally independent. So, what have I got next? Notice I just said so, but it's the same as like saying therefore. So, 2x must be equal to 2, or therefore 2x equals 2. So, x equals 1 if I divide both sides, or therefore x equals 1. It links these statements together, makes it more readable. So, I strongly encourage you to set your equations out with this symbol here. You're not going to lose marks if you did leave this out in any exam. But it does, as I say, make it more readable. So I've introduced you to this symbol here. Let's just put it down. It means therefore. OK, therefore. You could use it in place of so. Some people, you'll notice, use this symbol. It's like an equal sign, but with an arrow on the end. You could use this in place of the therefore in a situation like this. It means, or its proper name is, implies. You can think of it as being, it follows that. OK, it follows that. So it's a bit like saying so or therefore. So if I wrote 2x plus 6 equals 8, and I wrote this symbol instead of the therefore, I can read it as, it follows that 2x must equal 8 minus 6. And again, if I wrote it here, it follows that 2x equals 2, and so on. All right? Now, I'm going to introduce you to another question, OK, where I often see common mistakes. And for this one, we've got to solve 19x minus 2 equals 5. Now you might like to pause the video. In fact, I would definitely encourage you to pause the video and have a go at this question. I've kept it very straightforward. It's not about actually solving the equation. 
It is about how you set it out and if you write down sensible statements. So do pause the video, have a go at it, come back when ready and see uh, what solution you've got. So welcome back if you had a go, see how you got on. Well the first thing I'd want to do is add two to both sides. So therefore I'm going to get 19x equals 5 add 2. Or you could just write 7. Okay, the answer straight away there. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 19. And so therefore I get x equals 7 divided by 19. Now, if this was me, I would leave it at this answer. 7 divided by 19 is 7 nineteenths. This is the exact value. And I feel that this is what we want. Obviously, we want to know what x is. So this, to me, is a good answer. But did you carry on? Did you get a bit worried about what 7 divided by 19 was and then use your calculator? If you did, you would have got, well, well, you would have got something maybe like this. I mean, when I did it on my calculator, I ended up with x equaled 0.3684210526315789487. And there was a dot over the top of the 3 and over the 7 which meant that this series of digits repeated itself again. So once you had got this, then it started off again, 3, 6, 8, 4, and so on, all the way down to that 7, and it kept doing that ad infinitum. So I can't really write down the exact result. I suppose I could write it like this, but this is not really that good, I don't think. But at least it is the accurate result. But maybe you got something like this on your calculator and then decided, OK, I'm not going to write all of that out. I'm going to write x equals 0.37, say. You rounded it up. Well, then this answer is clearly wrong. It's clearly wrong because if we check it back into the equation, let's just write this out for you. We'll just put check, OK? If we check this out, 19 multiplied by 0.37 and then minus 2, we don't get 5. What we get, in fact, is 5.03, not 5. So x doesn't equal 0.37, which is what we're claiming here. x equals 0.37. Clearly, this is wrong. What we're trying to say is that it's approximately 0.37 rather than being 0.37. So what I'm saying to you is that I would want to avoid this. Okay, so we'd want to avoid these steps. Let's just kind of box that off. So if you do decide to carry on beyond this step here and do this division, what should you write? Well, certainly I wouldn't want to write all this decimal out. Knowing that I'm going to approximate my answer, I would want to put therefore x equals and take a few of these digits, say the first four digits, 0.3684. Now clearly x doesn't equal this. This decimal carries on. So I'm not going to round this, but I'm going to introduce three dots here. The three dots, we'll put it over here, means and so on. OK, I'll just write that here, and so on. So what I'm saying is x equals 0.3684 and so on, that there's more digits behind here. And I haven't rounded this up. If after this 4 there was a 9 there, say, I certainly wouldn't round that to a 5. I'd just still write 0.3684 and so on. And then I can say, therefore, x equals and decide on an accuracy. Suppose I decide on two decimal places, then x equals 0.37. But I don't leave it like that because, as I set up here, I've proved to you that it's wrong. 
what I need to do is say in brackets here what accuracy that I've used. And in this case, say two decimal places. I'll get the same answer for this example if it was two significant figures as well. But at least I've got an accuracy there and I'm saying that x equals 0.37 approximately if you like. But then I'm giving that approximation to two decimal places. I'm not categorically saying it is 0.37. So an answer presented like this is going to be OK. Right? But if you want the exact answer, just leave it as a fraction or whatever. x equals 7 nineteenths. So I hope that's given you some idea how I would uh, encourage you to lay out an equation. And the notation that we tend to get when you're dealing with equations. And you'll see in all my videos that I'm using this kind of notation. I don't use this one so much, but it is there, but I tend to use therefore. OK, and you'll notice this and so on, the three dots occurring a lot. OK, well, that brings us to the end of this tutorial on how I would encourage you anyway to lay out an equation.